Coffee Break with Rachel V. Hill. Taking a daily look at the biggest stories in Denver sports and interacting live with you, the Coffee Break fam. So sit back, relax, grab a cup of joe, and enjoy your coffee break. Here's your host, Rachel V. Hill. Oh, NFL draft season is definitely underway, and the rumors are starting to swirl. Of course, everyone kind of has right now the Broncos moving up into that number four spot, trying to make a trade with the Arizona Cardinals to get maybe one of the top four quarterbacks off the board. But what if that can't happen? Are you okay with the Bo Nix, the Michael Penix Jr.? Or what about Spencer Rattler? Today to talk with us a little bit about QBs, and then we're going to dive into some Colorado Avalanche. I'm very excited to have on our very own Will Peterson. But so, yeah, what if the Broncos can't move up, Will? Are you okay with them taking Spencer Rattler? Well, you got to give me a little more context. What round are we talking in? Wherever you think, because I don't think with number 12, if the top four are off the board, I'm like, "Uh, I I just don't think you should try and take a Michael Penix at number 12. There's going to be plenty of other better players available. So I'll let you decide what round it is you want to look at him available as. Yeah, I mean, he's a fascinating guy because at one point, Rachel, we were hearing number one overall pick, Spencer Rattler, and then his college career kind of did this, and now he's a mid-round guy, right? So he's a a third, fourth, fifth-round guy. Um, I don't know. I can't go to camp with just Jared Stidham and Spencer Rattler and Ben DiNucci, if that's what you're asking me. So, no, my stance on this, Rachel, is they always have had to get one of the big six. One of the big six needs to be uh, at training camp with the Denver Broncos. So, I don't know. If Rattler fell to the sixth or seventh round and you took Bo Nix and Spencer Rattler, then sure. I'm not opposed to taking two QBs in one draft. I know some people are. But, no, there's no shot I'm going to – training camp on July 28th with my quarterbacks is Jarrett Stidham, Spencer Rattler, and Ben DiNucci. Okay, so of course I always have to go to Twitter, and I asked everybody on Twitter, like, would you be okay with this situation? And some people went on to say, yeah, I'm actually totally okay with this. Some people said if Bo Nix is not available in the second round, why not? A few people are saying, don't forget the Broncos do not have a second round pick. Correct, Well, Right, they do not? Not as of now. Okay, I'm like making sure I'm getting all my draft now, you know, starting to get a little confused because I'm like, okay, how can the Broncos work their way up into that fourth round pick or that fourth pick overall? I'm I'm kind of all over the place. People are saying, yes, draft him. Why not? Why not? A lot of people are saying, absolutely not. Hell no. There's so many mixed feelings. But when you look at what Spencer, Spencer Rattler has, he's got good arm strength. He's got accuracy. I'm like, if you can get him in the fourth or fifth round, I say, why the heck not? If you can get... Uh, Brock Bowers at number 12. I don't know if he'd be there, but if you can't get the quarterback that Sean wants or, you know, that's one of those top guys, I say, why the heck not get him down later on, like I said, fourth or fifth round? I'm okay with that. But again, it depends on your plan. So you're okay with going to camp with Stidham versus Rattler in a competition? That's, that's That's not satisfactory enough for me at the quarterback position. Trust me, I'm 100% with you. Right now, I have them trading up into the fourth round pick or the fourth pick overall with the Arizona Cardinals. That's what I want. But I also don't want you to overpay for uh, Michael Penix Jr. and then you get nothing out of it. Like, there is a sense of, yeah, we all really desperately need the quarterback right now, but there's also the chance, Will, that it just doesn't line up that way. Like, if what if Arizona decides, oh, we're not going to give it to the Broncos. We're going to go give it to some other team who can possibly trade up the Vikings or whoever it could be that can offer more. Like, we have to realistically look at this. Is you can't give up the quote-unquote future for also not a good enough quarterback, you know? Yeah, but then you're probably settling for Knicks or Penix at 12 because, again, you, you keep saying, why not, why not? But I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pin you down on this. I Tell love me, it. are you okay with Rattler and Stidham as the quarterbacks on July 28th? Or are you with my plan that, no, it would be Stidham, Bo Nix, and Rattler, and you'd be okay with drafting two quarterbacks? I'm totally in on Bo Nix. I'm really not in on Michael Penix Jr. I do think that there is a work ethic issue that has resulted in injuries, and I just think – You can maybe fly with that in college, but you can't fly with that at the pro level. So I'm really not in on Michael Penix Jr. at all. Bo Nix, I'm definitely in on. But again, if draft boards don't fall your way, then all of a sudden you're looking at a very just like serious situation where you're like, I don't want to overpay for somebody who's not worth overpaying for when this roster already does not have very much talent on it. That sounds harsh to say because these are professional athletes, but they're struggling a little bit right now, Will. Yeah, but I don't think there's any chance Nix is off the board as well. I don't think he's but going. That's, I feel like that's overpaying. It may be overpaying, but again, you have to overpay because that's how desperate you are for a quarterback. So 
we can we can talk about Spencer. You'd rather Rattler take Bo Nix than Brock Bowers at twelve. Yeah, if if, if the top four doesn't oh. break your way and you have to, then you have to, Rachel. I can't I can't sit here as a Broncos fan and say we can go into camp with a career backup who started what four games in Jared Stidham, yep. a fifth round pick in Spencer Rattler, and Ben DiNucci, who was playing in the XFL. Like I just can't I I can't comprehend that being the plan. Rachel, if that is the case, they will go 2-15. and 15. They will be the worst team in the NFL. And I'm, they will tank whether they want to tank or not. So, yeah, I think you have to take Bonix at 12 because I think it's a disservice to Broncos country if that's your plan rolling into Dove Valley at the, at the end of July. So you're not in on the tank for Shadur? If that's the way it shakes out, <laughs> sure. But, Rachel, think about how long this offseason has already been. And imagine oh, Broncos fans, we are 13 months away from finally getting our quarterback. No, 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 no. The way I want it is I want to be three weeks away from finding out who my quarterback is. Not 13 months. So, no, I, you know, we can talk in October. Maybe they're one and eight. And they stay in chaos, tank for Shadur, whatever. Mm-hmm. But I'm not sitting here on April 2nd, 2024, and going to talk to you about April 25th, 2025. No one can plan their life 13 months out. That is an absurd absurd idea and i'm not saying it's your idea but it is an idea people have and it just has been eight years and i'm not willing to just pack it in for a ninth this has been too frustrating it's super frustrating and i 100 percent agree with you and no i am not in on just saying whatever screw it tank for shadur that is not my point my point is is the cards may not fall for the denver broncos so we're gonna have to look at other options and i do like spencer rattler and what he brings to the table but yeah, you also have to look at the point of the price is right. And that is like a fourth or fifth round, if possibly even later for her or for him. But yes, ultimately, I hope and I am praying that they move up to that number four spot. Arizona just trades away, gives it to the Denver Broncos. But then it also opens up the question of how much are you willing to give away, Will, to get that number four pick? Yeah, I mean, obviously 12 this year and then the first round pick next year and then Let's chat, right? You know, most people say, oh, it's a Trey Lance deal. You got to give up the first round pick in 2026 as well. Well, I don't know. Why can't we get a little creative here? Why can't I throw you a third round pick this year as well? Because the third round pick this year benefits a team more in the immediate future than a 2026 first. I mean, 2026 is a long time away, right? Mm -hmm. So why why can't you say, hey, how how do we get creative to make this work now? And then, of course, the elephant in the room is Pat Sertan II. um, And how big a chip is he? And the Broncos want to keep him. And I don't blame them for wanting to keep Pat Sertan the second. He is their best football player. Mm-hmm. But quarterback can only impact a game so much. In Pat Sertan's second career with the Broncos, I think they're 20 and 31, yeah. if I have my numbers right. So he's been a great player. He's an all-pro. He's a pro bowler. He can go to the house anytime he wants. But he's 20 and 31, again, through no fault of his own. He doesn't yes. play quarterback. He doesn't play the most impactful in position in sports. But if it was this year's first and Pat Sertan the second, because we're looking at PS2 as essentially two ones, mm-hmm. would you do that? I'll give you 12 and PS2 for four. Sold? Sold. Easy. Me too. Goodbye. Me too. But I don't think that's what's going to happen. I think you're looking at this year's first, so number 12, next year's first. You might be looking at a next year's second or third and possibly PS2. Like They have all the cards in their hand that they can say, you want your future now, Denver Broncos, or are you going to wait another year and see what can happen? Like, I think the Broncos are going to have to give up so much to possibly get that number four pick. No, uh, at some point you just have to hang up the phone then, because that that package it's you crazy. just laid out. I mean, that package you just laid out is just some too people. Much. Well, just- I'm sure you've heard the talk. Some people are willing to offer three first round picks. I'm like, that's insanity. That is truthfully giving up. And it's a gamble. Let's be honest. Every single time you pick up one of those quarterbacks, it's a gamble. You're not getting Caleb Williams or Jaden Daniels. Like to possibly get JJ McCarthy, that's 100% a gamble. To give up three years is insanity in my books. Yeah. And in your hypothetical, you threw in PS2. So at some point, we have to distinguish how many firsts does PS2 work. Well, yeah, fair. Me, my hypothetical, he's worth two. So I'm giving you 12 this year. And I'm giving you two first-round picks and an all-pro player. So if you want it, Arizona, take it. If you don't, goodbye. Yeah, it's it's just crazy right now because we're so desperate here in Broncos country of people wanting the quarterback. And you and I are both in it. Like we said, there's been eight years of suck, and we're like, please, we need the answer. We all thought it was going to be Russell Wilson. Didn't work out. We just got taken on a roller coaster ride. 
But you also have to, you can't mortgage your entire future just to place a bet on one of these young players coming out of college. So here's, here's what they could do. I'll, I'll give you the scenario I've laid out on 104.3 The Fan a couple times. What if they did this? We keep saying Brock Bowers or Bo Nix, Brock Bowers or Michael Penix Jr. Mm -hmm. What about Brock Bowers and Bo Nix, Brock Bowers and Michael Penix Jr.? So here's how you're going to do it, okay? You're going to take Brock Bowers at number 12 overall, get your generational tight end, look at the final four last year, Travis mm -hmm. Kelsey, Mark Andrews, George Kittle, Sam LaPorta. Yep. Tight end is a premium position in the NFL. And then, Rachel, you're going to get on the phone, and you're going to start calling teams to get up to the stop, start of the second round. And you know who may be there at the start of the second round? Bo Nix or Mason Penix Jr. And do you know how you do that? You say, can I interest you in a guy by the name of Cortland Sutton, who had 10 touchdowns last year and was tied fourth in the NFL? I've run this by Josh Dover. I've run it by James Merrillat. I've run it by Marcello Romano. They all like it. They think Sutton in a third to get to the top of the second could land you Nix or Penix. So if we're sitting here doing coffee break on April 26th, April 27th, 28th, 29th, and I say, Rachel, guess what? They got Brock Bowers and Bo Nix and had to give up Cortland Sutton. I think most people would agree to that, but I'd be curious to hear your thoughts. Um, absolutely. Sign me up. At first, I thought you were saying that Cortland Sutton was straight for a second. I was like, no way any team would ever agree with that. Oh, I'm giving but you my third. third. So I'm using him to just move up one round. I'm yeah. just moving up one round for a guy. Yes, I understand he didn't put up the yardage, but he was mm -hmm. fourth in the NFL in touchdowns last year. He's a big body in the red zone. You're telling me there's teams who can't use Cortland Sutton. If the price is Sutton in the third to get to the second, I think you could find a buyer, and I think you could get Brock Bowers and one of the big six quarterbacks. We need to stop looking at it as or. We should start looking at it as and. I love your optimism here, Will Peterson. I'm I'm all in for this. If this deal could actually happen, I'm in on Bonex. I'm in on Brock Bowers. Could you imagine having a Travis Kelsey, a George Kittle? I know it might take a year or so for him to really like, I mean, he's a solid player. Don't get me wrong. But just to like reach that level. But I'm totally here for that. And it feels like that's the way the NFL is going. If they can get Brock Bowers somehow, I'm totally down for it. But and then a Bo Nix, that's like the best draft day ever. Or, okay, so now let's do it this way. Would you rather do those two? Or would you rather move up for J.J. McCarthy and pick number four? And Those you're two. you're getting rid of PS2 and um, next year's first. Those two, for Me sure. Too. I'm keeping my future draft capital. I'm shedding another $17 million on Sutton's deal. PS2 still plays for me. And I'm still picking in the first round next year. And J.J. McCarthy could be a great player. Rachel, he has moved up the board in games that have not been played. He's I moved know. up on things like the NFL Combine in interviews, that's not necessarily a recipe for success moving forward for a guy to go from fringe first round pick to number four overall. Give me my idea, Sutton in a third for Bowers and Knicks essentially any day of the week. Man, Will Peterson, why aren't you George Payton? Can the Denver Broncos call you up for a deal? Because this is great. You just, like, like I, I love this idea. I promise you that. I love this idea, one that I had not even thought of. Because yes, in my mind, it has been either or. Like, you can't get both, but maybe you can. Maybe everything can draw that exact same way. Uh, same thing moving on to the Colorado Avalanche and Denver Nuggets. Maybe it's not going to be just an either or when it comes to Nicole Jokic or Nathan McKinnon win winning MVP. It might be both, and you also think we might be getting two parades this summer, Will. Yeah, I wrote about it this morning at denversports.com. Why not get a little bit greedy, Rachel? Because here's the thing. If Why not? you went into the Nuggets locker room tonight and you said, hey, it's the expectation championship, they would all say yes. Mm -hmm. If you went into the Avalanche locker room tonight and said, hey, it's the expectation championship, they would all say yes. Yes. So by me and the fans saying, hey, our expectation is also championship, we're not putting an unfair burden on any of these guys. I guarantee you the best, best players on both teams would say we want a championship. Someone's got to win it in the NBA. Someone's got to win it in the NHL. I know it hasn't happened in the same city in forever and ever, but I'm just saying let's get a little greedy and let's not just hope for one parade this summer. Let's hope for two. Now, I will give the caveat that it's already the pushback I'm getting. Well, what if there's a big injury? What if they lose in an epic series in a game seven? Yeah, that's, that stuff could happen. I mean, we're knocking on wood about the injury. And game sevens, game seven losses happen. They do. Could the Avs lose in overtime in a game seven? Of course. Could the Nuggets lose in overtime in a game seven? Of course. But both mm -hmm. these teams – have proven in the last, what, 21 months that mm -hmm. they are capable of winning titles. And I think, Rachel, there's a chance we get two 
parades this summer, not just one, two. And I'm totally down for that. The Avs, though, are the ones that give me a little bit more anxiety when we start to think about the future. Obviously, they lose last night to the Blue Jackets. It wasn't a solid game, but when you have 50 shots, almost 50 shots on goal, you would think that a few more would go in besides one. But, Will, it kind of does feel like, and this is the exact same thing that happened during the cup run, it feels like there's a bit of a goalie issue, and that's our Papa Murphy's question of the show is there a goalie issue with this Colorado Avalanche team? Mm, that's tough for me because Georgiev has has proven or wants to be proven to be the guy, right? Yeah. And remember, Rachel, when we started the season, Eustis Ananen was the fourth string goalie on the oh. Colorado Avalanche. Pavel Francouz, the hope was he would be back. Uh, Prozbatov, the hope was he would be the backup yeah. after Francouz. And Eustis Ananen was thought of as a bit of an afterthought in the Colorado Eagles organization. So mm -hmm. I just can't get on board with saying, hey, six months ago, five months ago, this guy was our fourth stringer and in our minor leagues. And now he's starting game one of the Stanley Cup final. I love Anna. He's been solid for the most part. A little bit of a softy or two last night in yeah. Columbus. But no, I'm ride or die with Georgiev. And I think it would just be overthinking it to make a change at goalie going into the playoffs. And last night for Ananen, it was a scheduled start for him. So, like, let's not think that him replacing Georgiev in the game before, that it was like, oh, my gosh, they're starting to make a change. No, this was a scheduled start. Jared Bednar made a point to say that before the game yesterday. It is just interesting that it's the exact same thing it feels like that we had during the cup run, right? Like, almost deja vu in a sense with how all of this is starting to play out. But... Will, you also kind of got to give Annan in his roses because besides last night, he's been pretty solid when he's needed out there. And maybe Georgie is your starter no matter what. But if you do need that backup, he's not bad. Yeah, it'd be the perfect kind of deja vu if you're an ass fan, right? Because yeah. what happened? Kemper played pretty well. Then he got poked in the eye. Francois had to come in. Francois had to play the whole Western Conference final. Yep. And then Darcy Kemper played well in the Stanley Cup final, including holding Tampa Bay to just one goal in game six to ultimately win the Stanley Cup. So where you're going with this is, is kind of getting me excited of like, hey, we've ridden two goalies before to a cup. And mm -hmm. it wasn't like we did it 20 years ago. We did it two years ago. Yeah. If they have to start Georgiev and mix Ananen in for, I don't know, five, six games throughout the cup run, that's not the worst thing in the world because, again, it's a formula that Jared Bednar's club has proven can work. Absolutely. The other thing, though, if we're going to play a little bit of deja vu, this might be a little bit of a negative one, is Val Nachushkin hasn't been with the team. This team is completely different when Val Nachushkin is out there, and he hasn't been here for the games that he's lost. They're hoping that he's going to join them on this road trip at some point, but you have to have Val out there at some point, because if not, they could have a first-round exit because they are just not the same team. Yeah, the good news is the beat reporters are saying he skated hard for an hour this morning over at Family Sports along with Gabe Landeskog. I mean, first of mm -hmm. all, let's be honest, Rachel, just getting eyes on Natushkin is always a good thing. He's out there. He's clean. We know, you know, we know this is a legitimate lower body injury and not something else because it's part of the conversation, unfortunately. It's happened twice in the last year. He's yeah. just hurt, so that's cool. Whatever. Hockey players get hurt. But I was just glad to see folks had eyes on him this morning. He skated hard for an hour. Yeah. I think that means the timeline of him coming back on this road trip is realistic. If not next homestand, next weekend, before the playoffs start, Nachushkin will be back. Mm -hmm. And I'm with you. You and I have talked about it plenty on this show. They are a 500 team without him, more or less. A yeah. round one exit written all over it without him. And they are a cup contender with him. It is remarkable how much impact he has on the way they play. But the numbers back it up. Again, he has to be out there for them to win the Stanley Cup. They will not even sniff the Stanley Cup without a healthy Valerian Chushi. No, 100% with you. And then there's a lot of people that are also bringing up the other name you mentioned, and that's Gabriel Landeskog. And people are like, okay, that one year is approaching. Are we going to see him out there for the playoffs? Personally, for me, while I would love to see Gabe go out there because of who Gabe is, I just don't think it's really in the cards, Will. And I know that kind of stinks to say, but one, he wouldn't be in playoff hockey, you know, peak performance. Like, that's a different breed. First of all, just regular season is a different breed, but playoff hockey is totally different. And I, I'm i so worried for the longevity of his career that if he does just try and come back too soon, that we could see something bad happen to him. And I know there's always the if ands, or buts, or whatever can happen. It just feels like it's pushing it a little bit, even though he's out there skating. 
Well, the reports today were he skated for about 20 minutes lightly. So take oh. that for what you will. Gabe and Nachushkin were both out there. One of them did an hour hard and one of them did 20 minutes lightly. Yeah, That's someone who's close to coming back and someone who's not so close to coming back. Um, but I'll take a little different stance than you. I don't think his career has a lot of longevity left in it anyhow. So if he can okay. come back and play 15 games and get a second Stanley Cup and wear his Sweden flag at another parade and go off a two-time champion in three years, I think Gabe Landeskog would take that any day of the week. So I'm not predicting this, Rachel, but I'll just give you a scenario. Landeskog does find his way back at some point in the playoffs, maybe not round one, round two. He plays 15 games. He plays 10 minutes a game on the fourth line. He's out there on the first power play as a big body in front because his hand-eye coordination is so good. He wins a second Stanley Cup and he retires. I mean, I think that is another possibility here too, Rachel, that he's got this much left in the tank. And what's he do with that gas? He empties it out over the next three months and goes for a second championship. Then is it retirement? Do you see what could happen? It's almost like you would use him as a Curtis McDermott to be like the fighter, right? Like Gabe was the, one of the fighters on that team, but the oh. speed, I just don't know if it's it's going to be there. And that's where okay. I'm like, yeah, to bring him back. I, I get it, the name, but. We can't put Gabe Landeskog and Curtis McDermott in the same sentence with a straight face. Come on now. I'm just Come saying on. you need a big body because he's not going to be that fast. Like, he's not going to be fast, but I think power play one, he's invaluable. I, I, I think you put him out there in front of the net, he, he can score five goals, garbage goals, tipping goals. You know, that's what Gabe does. I mean, that's frankly what he did two years ago. Those 20 games were the only 20 games he played after that knee surgery in March. But maybe if he was skating and going medium, not light skating – you can't ask him to come back and get to playoff speed where these guys have been training for the past eight months to do that. If somebody who's doing light skating a month or two months earlier, like that's not realistic. Maybe if you want him to be a big body and yes, Gabriel Landis Gog is a much better player than Curtis McDermott. I'm just saying that, but maybe if you want that big body, sure. Just to have him out there, but the speed's not going to be there. No, no. And that's why, that's why people say, Oh yeah, you're going to slot him back in on the first or second line. No, 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 no. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> You're starting him in on the fourth line, and he is a power play one option um, yeah. to go out there on, on the extra attack and, and try to get you a goal or two. I, again, it's not my prediction. He comes back and wins a cup and then retires. That'd be but glorious. If we want to go full Disney movie, why not go full Disney movie? That would be the script that would be amazing. Landis Scott gets a second cup and uh, calls it a career. Have a day. Okay, I always like to read any of the comments. Some people are down to get Rattler. I'm just saying over here. And then other people are saying trading back gives us a second round pick. Knicks will be there, so why not look at him? Um, I'm trying to read some of these other ones. Knicks and Penix are not falling past 16. Interesting. I feel like they're not going to go before 16, but maybe that's just me being a little down on them. Um, aside from Caleb Williams, are any more special than whatever crap will be hyped up next year? It's a fair point by Ted in the comments, too. So there's always a lot of interesting, you know, looks at all of these players as they get ready to go into the draft and have that happen. Um, will Peterson, if you had your dream scenario right now, last question, which one are you going with the two picks? Is that like your dream scenario? No, my dream scenario, Rachel, is that they get to four, but it's not McCarthy. My dream scenario is they get to four and it's Jaden Daniels. Because I don't agree. forget, Tom Pelissero, the NFL Network, is reporting the commanders really like McCarthy at two. Okay? And there's reports Ed. that the Patriots like Drake May at three. So if you're making me pick dream scenario, Jaden Daniels is the next quarterback of the Denver Broncos with the number four overall pick. Uh, me too. Sign me up for that one immediately. But there will, of course, be plenty more options as everybody gets ready for the draft and the avalanche heading off to the playoffs. It's going to be here before we know it. Will Peterson, an absolute pleasure having you on. I appreciate you, my friend. See you, Rachel. All right. That was so much fun, you guys. I always love debating with Will. He always hands it back to me, which I love to be able to give my opinion and some insight to. I'm kind of in on Spencer Rattler, but again, only if you're looking at him in that fourth or fifth round um, to bring another backup QB. So let me know how you are feeling in the comments. As always, well, we will be back tomorrow, 12 p.m. for another episode of Coffee Break. Make sure you check out Orange and Blue today as well. That's 4 p.m. with Cecil and Mace. And then if you are watching us on YouTube, subscribe, like, comment down below. That way we can get out to more Denver Broncos fans, Colorado Avalanche fans, etc. Um, I appreciate you all. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of your day with me and we will see you guys tomorrow. Get back to work, everybody. Bye.